The objective of Operation Tactical Hypertrophy is to have Tom moving like he's 100 pounds lighter. To have the speed and agility of somebody 100 pounds lighter. So basically the overall movement capacity of a much smaller man, but have the strength of someone that's a 450 pound world's strongest man competitor. We always talk about staying ready so you don't have to get ready. And gas station ready. That's exactly what the objection here is for Tom. And uh, he's, he's doing a fantastic job. Tom's down to 370 pounds. And he's, he's eating 7,800 calories a day. From Remember, he got up to over 400 pounds. And he's never felt so athletic. He's never felt so fast. This has been a... I mean, this process basically first started in 2011. Just the last couple years, we've really cranked it up. We've been working together. Actually, 2010, so 11 years. So we've been working together for 11 years. And it's just getting started. The fun is about to begin with a major focus here now on speed and athleticism. So, you know, even when Tom got up to 400 pounds... We did not create an artificial strength base. We kept the conditioning, the tempo runs, short sprints, things like that, the rucks every day. All that stuff prepared Tom for this phase that he's in now. So this is very exciting. So what we're trying to do here, or not try, I hate that word, what we're set out to accomplish here, we'll talk today more about building explosive power. So what we're going to do here is increase Tom's relative strength. So relative strength is simply... The strength to body weight ratio, um, you know, really, you get, you need, that's that's super important. So, and to keep your speed as you gain weight, you need to get basically gain about for every you know ten pounds of body weight you gain in the squ- it, it, overall, you need to increase your squat or your deadlift by about twenty five pounds. So it's about two point five times threshold there to maintain speed, not not necessarily to get faster. Assuming there, you know, there's no faulty mechanics. So that's the number one. Then obviously on the core lifts, Tom has to train a compensatory acceleration style. So any lift can be an explosive lift as long as you focus on executing that movement with great technique and moving the weight from point A to point B with great technique. This is the brainchild of my mentor, Dr. the late Dr. Fred Hatfield. We traveled all around the world and, and over many, you know, from... You know, be, from California to talking this over in sake bombs, you know, in, in Okinawa, I can tell you there is nothing more important for being strong and fast besides your mindset than compensatory acceleration training. So you, what does that mean? You, you think about it. You can half squat more than you can full squat. So as your leverage improves in the squat movement, the natural thing is to relax. Instead of relaxing, you want to be explosive. You want to accelerate that weight. Compensatory acceleration training means you compensate for your improved leverage by, by accelerating the weight. Next, plyometric jumps. So we get like kind of fuzzy, you know, is it the traditional shock training from Russia. I'm just talking about jump training in general. It's very important and it's how you bridge that. It's one of the major ways you, be, you know, strongman is on one side of the continuum of bridging the gap, uh, jump training on the other. It, jump training plyometrics bridge the gap between the rate room and the field of play. So if you have somebody, you know, looking like Tarzan on whatever their field of play is, playing like Jane, um, unless it's, if it's a head, you know, if it's a head issue, that's a different different issue altogether. But if it's actually one of ability, that plyometrics and strongman training are one of those ways to bridge that gap, okay? So we do, you know, we, we do vertical, you know, vertical training, jumping up, and also to maximize, you um, you know, sprinting ability, even train like horizontal jumps, for example, like, you know, standing broad jumps, things like that. Um, and if, you, if you're watching this for, for tips and stuff, you probably should be able to squat about twice your body weight. And if you have like over 20% body fat, you're real heavy, you might want to think twice about, you know, including jump training or really make sure to work up to it. The next one is we focus on these weighted triple extension movements. So that's like your, your trap bar jumps, you know, any loading um, or throwing type of deal that's a weighted triple extension movement. Uh, movement. So this is a movement that locks out the ankles, knees, and hips. That's what triple extension is. And um, you can't obviously you can't maximize sprinting speed without doing that. So it's paramount to being an explosive athlete and training that loaded but remaining you know fast is huge. Okay. And you got to think about when we go back to the compensatory acceleration training. We really, even if the weight is moving slow, the intent is to move that weight very fast. 
We've also added, and we'll touch on later, sort of an anti-fragility type of training at the end of Tom's workout. He'll do something interesting at the end of the workout to make sure he's always ready to go. Because it's amazing how many people now, and we'll, we'll touch on this later more, how many people nowadays can do things. I see people, when I used to go to gym, you know, public gyms, like not good gyms, like 24-hour fitness, some, you see someone nowadays squatting 600 pounds with perfect technique, but can't even do a farmer's walk on a trap bar with 315, so... We want to be anti-fragile, be ready for anything, whether it's, you know, the West by God, Virginia dive bar or whatever.